Finally, the August picks are here. Hey guys, welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at the August book of the month picks. I have been not so patiently waiting for these uh, picks to be released. So for July, they released them kind of like a few days before the beginning of July. Um, which was super exciting. And so this month I've been like <laughs> obsessively checking their website to see like if they were going to release them before the beginning of August. They didn't. <laughs> so today's August 1st um, and they finally got released. And I am so excited to see what they have for this month's picks. Uh, so before we dive into looking at them, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want more book videos. Okay, so there are seven selections this month, which is a lot, so I'm pretty excited about that. I do have to say that I'm a little surprised that there aren't a few books on here that I was expecting to be on here. A um, little disappointed that for, there's no romance, first of all. Um, I did kind of like a quick little look through. Um, so a little disappointed that Allie Hazelwood's new book, Love on the Brain, isn't a pick, just because I feel like the love hypothesis did so well. I'm surprised that they wouldn't pick her second novel, well, full-length novel, to be one of their picks. Kind of surprised by that. Also surprised that Carrie Soto isn't on here. Um, that does come out at the very end of August, so maybe it'll be like September pick. Um, but kind of surprised by that. Um, yeah, I don't know if I really recognize uh, Daisy Darker. I do recognize that one. Um, besides that, though, I'm not... I don't know. I'm not super excited just, like, looking at the first little glance through. I'm not like excited by any of them, but we'll see if any of the descriptions of them kind of like spark my interest. Okay, so the first one is a gothic fiction, which is pretty cool. Uh, small angels. In this small village where even the trees have secrets, a wedding reunites old friends and awakens ghosts of the past. Ah, <sighs> wedding book. Hope, I wonder. Okay, we'll see. Small Angels. I like um, that it's like a gothic fiction, like a horror-esque book. Um, I did read The Hacienda. Um, I didn't get it as a pick, but I read it and I enjoyed that. So I'm kind of interested in maybe like looking into more books like that. Um, okay, so this is a 400 pages. It's coming out August 2nd. Okay, so this one is about a wedding. I typically don't like to read books about weddings, but since it's kind of like a horror type book, I might be more interested in that. A wedding in a small English village attracts a malicious spirit forcing deep secrets to surface. A hypnotic tale of sisterhood, first love, and hauntings. As a teenager, ooh, buddy, that's long, okay. Um, as a teenager, Kate found safe harder, harbor from her parents' constant fighting in the company of the four gone sisters who live with their strict grandparents next to small angels, a church on the edge of the dense green woods. The first outsider to ever get close to the sisters, Kate eventually learned the family's secret. The woods are home to, ooh, a ghost, whom generations of gones had been charged with stopping from venturing into the village itself. So I'm currently reading Gallant in that kind of right by V.E. Schwab, Schwab, and that kind of gives me like Gallant vibes a little bit. Um, okay, so they're stopping the ghosts from venturing into the village, but as the sisters grew older, braver, and more independent, bucking against the family's burden, the bull, <laughs> the bulwark began to crack, culminating in a horrif horrifying act of violence that drove a terrible wedge between the sisters and Kate. Okay, this actually sounds pretty good. Well, now we get into the wedding stuff. Chloe has been planning her dream wedding for months. She has the dress, the flowers, the perfect venue. Small angels. Okay, I kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of into this a little bit. Like, ooh, you're gonna have your wedding at this like haunted place, but you don't know it's haunted. It's a charming, of course it is, a charming old church in the village where her fiance, Sam, is, oh, and his sister, oh, okay. And his sister grew up. But days before the ceremony, Chloe starts to hear unsettling no stories about small angels and where she begins to see it, smell, and hear things that couldn't possibly re be real. Ooh, okay, I'm super excited by this. 
Now Kate is returning home for the first time in years for Sam and Chloe's wedding, but the woods are coming alive again and Kate must reconnate with Lucia, the most troubled of the sisters, and her first love. Oh, cute! To protect Chloe, the village, and herself, an unforgettable knowledge about the memories that hold us back, those that show us the way forward. This is storytelling at its most magical. Enter small angels if you dare. Okay. <laughs> So it, so I don't like when, when, so I don't like when books are, I've said this so many times, I'm going to keep saying it when the main focus is like the wedding and the planning of the wedding and all that stuff doesn't seem like this is the case in that situation. And I like that it's, um, like a horror kind of like Gothic horror. I'm pretty into that. Um, yeah, I like that one. So next we have a contemporary fiction, When We Were Bright and Beautiful. In this gripping story set in the shadows of New York's elite, one family begins to unravel in the wake of scandal. Okay, this one also comes out August 2nd. Okay, this is um, an electrifying, twisty, and deeply emotional family drama set on Manhattan's glittering Upper East Side that explores the dark side of love, the limits of loyalty, and the high cost of truth. I don't know why I keep <laughs> I keep thinking about like Gossip Girl. <laughs> you can have everything and still not have enough. I feel like that could be like the tagline of Gossip Girl. Okay, Cassie Quinn may only be 23, but she knows a few things. One, money can't buy happiness, but it's certainly better to have it. Two, family matters most. Three, her younger brother... <laughs> Three, her younger brother, Billy, is not a rapist. Okay. All right. That took a turn. <laughs> um, when Billy, a junior at Princeton, is arrested for assaulting his ex-girlfriend, Cassie runs home to Manhattan to join forces with her big brother, Nate, and their parents, Lawrence and Eleanor. The Quinns scramble to hire the best legal minds money can buy, but Billy fits the all-too-familiar sex offender profile, white, athletic, and privileged. That makes headlines and sways juries. Meanwhile, Cassie struggles to understand why Billy's ex, Diana, would go this far. Even if the breakup was painful and she knows how the end of first love can destroy someone, her own years-long affair with a powerful, charismatic man left her shattered, and she's only recently regained her footing. As reporters converge outside of their Upper East Side landmark building, the Quinns gird themselves for a media-saturated trial, and Cassie vows she'll never... Er, and Cassie vows she'll do whatever it takes to save Billy. Billy. But <laughs> what... But what if that means exposing her darkest secrets to the world? Eh. Not into it. That doesn't really sound like a very fun read to me. I don't really want to read a, a trial about a sexual assault. I'm good. Thriller! Daisy Darker, repeat author, early release. Ooh, I wonder when this comes out. Crumbling Estate? Check. Bundle of Family Secrets? Check. Folks getting picked off like flies? Check. Trust no one. Daisy Darker. That's a cool name. Ooh, this is an early release. This comes out August 30th. So they gave us this one instead of Carrie Soda, which also comes out August 30th. Okay. New York Times bestselling queen of twists returns with a family reunion that leads to murder. After years of avoiding each other, Daisy Darker's entire family is assembling for Nana's 80th birth. Nana's 80th birthday party in Nana's crumbling gothic house on a tidy tidal island. Finally back together one last time. When the tide comes in, they will be cut off from the rest of the world for eight hours. Dun, dun, dun. The family arrives, each of them harboring secrets. Then at the stroke of midnight, as a storm rages, Nana is found dead. And an hour later, the next family member follows. Trapped on an island where someone is killing them off one by one, the Darkers, the Darkers, that's a cool last name, Darker. The Darkers must reckon with their present mystery as well as their past secrets before the tide comes in and it's all revealed. With a wicked wink to Agatha Christie's and then there were none, Daisy Darker's unforgettable twists will leave readers reeling. So this one kind of gives me the guest list vibes, like on an island that like you can't really escape and you know, it sounds very like kind of stereotypical thriller-esque. I do like that it comes out at the end of August. That's pretty cool. Um, but so far, that first one is the one I'm more excited, the most excited for. The Many Daughters of 
a fong moi. Moving and kaleidoscopic, this lyrical story of inheritance explores the ties that bind us to the past and future family. This one also comes out August 2nd. This is mesmerizing. Hotel on the Corner of Bitter and Sweet returns with a powerful exploration of the love that binds one family across the generations. Dorothy Moy breaks her own heart for a living. As Washington's former poet, that's how she describes channeling her disassociative episodes and mental health struggles into her art. When her five-year-old daughter exhibits similar behavior and begins remembering things from the lives of their ancestors, Dorothy believes the past has truly come to haunt her. Fearing that her child is predestined to endure the same debilitating depression that has marked her own life, Dorothy seeks radical help. Through an experimental treatment designed to mitigate inherited trauma, Dorothy intimately connects with the past generations of women in her family. Fei Moy, a nurse in China serving with the Flying Tigers, Zoe Moy, a student in England at a famous school with no rules, Lei King Moy, a girl quarantined in San Francisco during a plague epidemic, COVID. Greta Moy, a tech executive with a unique dating app, and Afong Moy, the Chinese woman to set foot in America. Dorothy discovers that trauma isn't the only thing she's inherited. A stranger is searching for her in each time period. What is going on? Okay. Oh, this is weird. Oh, I didn't even think. Okay, so she's connecting with past generations of women in her family. I just assumed that she was talking to her elderly relatives. It sounds like she's going back in time. So the girl quarantined in San Francisco during a plague epidemic might not be COVID. It may be a past ec- epidemic. Okay, I'm caught up. A st- Okay, so stranger is searching for her in each time period. A stranger who's loved her through all of her genetic memories. Dorothy endeavors to break the cycle of pain and abandonment to finally find peace for her daughter and to gain the love that has long been waiting, knowing that she may pay the ultimate price. This top review is literally, this is a difficult review to write because I can't really tell you what happened in the story. I don't understand what happened or how it happened or why it happened. So kind of with like the different like traveling around and like, I don't know, there being like a deeper like, thing that she's like searching for. It kind of reminds me of the movie Everything Everywhere All at Once, which was kind of a mindfuck, but it was really good. Um, I don't really know how I feel about this one. I don't really know if it sounds that good. It has good ratings, but I don't know. It sounds kind of confusing. Another thriller. Okay. Man, they like their thrillers. Girl, forgotten. And Karen Slaughter's latest, a newly minted marshal on assignment, can't help but be drawn into a gruesome cold case. This is Andrea Oliver number two. Do I need to know what happened in the first one? Pieces of Her. Published in 2018. Ooh, really short description. I like that. (laughs) Okay, so expected... See, this is what I don't understand. Okay, so it says expected publication is August 23rd, 2022, but it says first published on June 23rd of 2022. So how are we supposed to know when it was actually released? What's this called? Girl Forgotten. Let's check Amazon. Okay, so this says August 23rd, so we're going to go with that. Pieces of her on Netflix. All right. Okay. Anyway, regardless. Okay. So let's, let's see what Girl Forgotten is about. Okay. A small town hides a big secret. Who killed Emily Vaughn? Prom night, Longville Beach, 1982. Emily Vaughn dresses carefully for what's supposed to be the highlight of any high school career. Emily has a secret, and by the end of the night, because of that secret, she will be dead. Nearly 40 years later, Andrea Oliver, newly qualified as a U.S. Marshal, receives her first assignment to go to Long Bill Beach to protect a judge receiving death threats. But Andrea's real focus isn't the judge, it's Emily Vaughn. Ever since she first heard Emily's name a year ago, she's been haunted by her brutal death, nobody was ever convicted, her friends closed ranks, her family shut themselves off in their grief, the town moved on, so the killer is still out there. But now Andrea has a chance to find out what really happened. So now, (laughs) sorry, so I can't stop focusing on this. So is Andrea, so I'm assuming Andrea Oliver is... Yeah, so she was in this first book, too. I don't know. I'm not super impressed with that. I'm a little salty that they aren't picking um, 
that they didn't pick Ashley Flowers' new book as a pick. Um, she's the host of the True Crime Junkie podcast, and her book is com- her new book is coming out August sixteenth. And I really want to read it, and it's a thriller. And I'm um, trying to like figure out like it's kind of like that, trying to figure out like the mystery of this cold case. Um, I feel like that would have been a better pick. Um, so I'm a little salty about that. I'm a little salty about these picks. I'm not super impressed right now. Not going to lie. We have two left, but I don't know. There's seven picks this month, but I mean, I personally think they're a little rough. Okay, let's see if this one's good. Bronze Drum. This epic tale of sisterhood and reclaiming homelands will have your heart pounding in your chest like drums of war. This one is coming out August 9th. Um, a stunning novel of ancient Vietnam based on the tr- oh, true story. That's cool. A uh, true story of two warrior sisters who raised an army of women to overthrow the Han Chinese and rule as kings over a united people. For readers of Cersei and Cersei. For readers of Cersei and the Night Tiger. Okay, that sounds kind of cool. Gather around children of Chu Den and be brave, for even to listen to the story of the Trung sisters in these troubled times is a dangerous act. In 40 CE. Whoa, this is very historical. <laughs> Man, we going way back. Okay, in 40 CE, two daughters of a Vietnamese lord feel their days at training, studying, and trying to stay true to Vietnamese traditions. Um, One is disciplined and wise, always excelling in her duty. The other is fierce and free-spirited, more concerned with spending time in the gardens and with lovers. But these sisters' lives and the lives of their people are shadowed by the oppressive rule of Han Chinese. They are forced to adopt Confucian teachings, secure marriages, and pay ever-increasing taxes. As the people's frustration boils over, the country comes ever closer to the edge of war. It's not a very detailed uh, description. Um, I'm assuming that they are... Are they overthrowing the government? I don't know. Um, I, it's, it's, it's intriguing that the historical aspect of it is going back so far, 40 CE, like that's pretty crazy. I feel like that would be a lot of research to write. And that's pretty, I think that's pretty impressive. That's pretty cool. Um, I don't really like historical books though. So, you know, I'll probably pass. Okay. Last one. We have a horror um, I've been liking the, the freakier things lately, so kind of into this. It's a pretty cool cover. The Devil Takes You Home. The surreal borderland genre bender follows the violent journey of one man trying to hold his family together. If you add this book to your box, you may experience a slight shipping delay. Okay, when's this one come out? The Devil Takes You Home. That's a pretty cool, um, title. Why is this one going to be delayed? It comes out August 2nd. Um, let's see. This is a genre defying thriller about a father desperate to salvage what's less of, left of his family, even if it means a descent into violence, both supernatural and of our own terrifying world. Buried in debt due to his young daughter's illness, his marriage at the brink, Mario reluctantly takes a job as a hitman, surprising himself with his proclivity for violence. After tragedy destroys a life he knew... I'm assuming his daughter passes. Um, Mario agrees to one final job, hijack a cartel's cash shipment before it reaches Mexico. Yeah, bad idea. Along with an old friend and a cartel insider named Wonka, Mario sets off on the near suicidal mission, duh, which will leave him either a cool 200k, 200k for that? That does not seem like enough money. Or a bullet in the skull. But the path to, well, I, I, he probably doesn't feel like he has anything to lose. Um, but the path to reward or ruin is never as straight as it seems. As the three complicated men, three, oh, an old friend, a cartel insider, okay. Um, but the path to reward or is never as straight as it seems. As the three complicated men travel through the endless landscape of Texas, across the border and back, their hidden motivations are laid bare alongside nightmarish encounters that defy explanation. One thing is certain, even if Mario makes it out alive, he won't return the same. Obviously. The devil takes you home. So this is paranormal? It's an odyssey for fans of S.A. Cosby's Southern Noir... Blacktop Wasteland by way of the boundary defying storytelling. I'm curious where the paranormal aspects come in. It said it was supernatural. 
I don't know. With a cool name and a cool cover like that, I was expecting something completely different. Man, guys, I... <laughs> like, is anyone else disappointed this month? I do, I'm a little disappointed, not gonna lie. Like, there are seven selections, and I'm not, like... I don't know. I'm a little disappointed. Although I do have to say Small Angels, I'm kind of into. Um, I Like I said, I've been liking gothic type horror-esque things um, more often lately. Um, and it actually does sound kind of intriguing. So I will definitely be picking that one just because I think all of the other ones don't really sound super great. So yeah, hopefully Small Angels is good. Um, like I said, it's kind of the only one that I was like, I was like, oh, this actually sounds pretty good. The rest I'm not super impressed with. Um, I think I'm just let down because last month, The Bodyguard I was my pick and I really liked it. I thought it was really good. Um, so I was hoping for something more like lighthearted and fun. I'm more into like lighthearted type reads um, versus like these like, like, wordy thrillers and like kind of all the same and I don't know I just I'm not really it's summer so I'm not really like in the mood for like a heavy dense read um so hopefully Small Angels is like um exciting but also not like as like a lot to chew on I guess um so yeah that's what I'm picking for this month um let me know what you think of these picks in the, the comments down below. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending your time with me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs>